Hey guys, and welcome to Poker Stories Behind the Scenes, the podcast um, where we talk about poker stories and all the stuff that happens uh, around it. As you can hear, I'm a little bit sick today, so I won't be talking as much. But on my side, friend of mine, Herbert, who is also leading this podcast, will um, take the lead. And we've got a very special guest, Clemens, um, here as well. So I will be just asking some questions in between. And from now on, Herbert is going to be talking and um, leading this podcast. Hi, Herbert. There you go. <laughs> Hi, guys. And welcome, Clemens. Thank you, everyone. Nice to have you on the show. Yeah. Uh, Thank you for the invitation. Really, really proud. So before, before we kick off with you, Clemens, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about what we want to do in the podcast and what not. So what we want to hear is, first of all, we want Clemens to be comfortable in all our guests. And we want to hear, uh, hear funny anecdotes, memories, and the experiences uh, in the poker industry. And what we don't want to talk about in great length is only poker talk. We don't really want to talk about like why you should five bet bluff uh, 500 uh, bb deep in this uh, circle if it underlines a story uh, that's great um, but for the rest we, we don't and then we want to be very respectful and uh, yeah that's it so clemens welcome again to the show uh, can you talk about uh, yourself a little bit Yes. Th thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. A really, really, really an honor. Um, yes, I'm Clemens, former poker player, um, but mostly like the, the mid stakes shriner. We, I think we discuss it later. Um, and um, former poker strategy employee, but it's it's been a long time. And now I'm um, I'm of of course English is not my native, as you can hear. So I'm I'm from Germany, and I'm living in Munich. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. So. Let's start with the first question. How did you get to poker strategy in the first place? Yeah. Yes. So, so, so once I think, Herbert and Vladimir, I think I, I, I know you for a long time, but we haven't, haven't talked for a long time. So, so Herbert, you reached out to me and was like, um, you sent me, I was like uh, thinking about it because it's been a long time. I think it was like, I don't know. So I, I first, I, I, I started playing poker. I think it was with friends. Like real home game stuff, which like I think like twenty or thirty euros or something like this, and I think I, I in the in the beginning I I lost a lot, but I, I had fun. So I like I think I got to the internet, somehow found Poker Strategy, um, and then they got this um, I don't know if they still have it this free fifty bucks. So you can use you you uh, you register, you get fifty dollars for free, and you start playing. So, um, and they had this great poker school. I, I start, uh, read the forum, I watched the videos and everything, and I started playing. I basically played a lot. So I grinded my way up. Um, and that's when it must be around 2007, 2008. I think 2007, I think. That was, I, but I don't know how exactly I came to Poker Stranger. I think it was just some Google search or something. Maybe some, some I don't know. But this, this basically, I started Poker Strategy, uh, le learning poker okay. with Poker Strategy. That's that's very similar to my story. And uh, what did you play? Did you play tournaments or cash game? Do you remember? I, yes, I was mostly mostly like well, mostly I think like like ninety nine percent a no limit player. I think like later on, you know. When when I I started with Omaha, but I was never a successful Omaha player, and so I basically was a no limit player. I grinded my way up. I think the, the I was basically mid stakes grinder. But mostly I played uh, NL, a no limit two hundred and no limit four hundred. Played some some six hundred and one k, but basically my 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 limits was um, two hundred and four hundred, which I played a couple of years. Okay, so I understand you were not a professional poker player before. Uh, uh, joining as employee poker strategy. So, what did you do before? What what education do you have, or what did you work before before yeah. that? Yeah, I, mm, I I was I was a student, but not 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 learning much, not doing much except playing <laughs> poker. But I was basically uh, studying um, international business, which I think I it, it took a while, maybe because of poker as well. 
because I, my, 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 my passion was more into poker than into or studying poker than studying um, management. So it took a it took a while, but I got my degree in uh, I think in two thousand nine. It was long. I I think I, I studied for a couple of years. So not like uh, I used to like I think I standard was like maybe five years. I it took me maybe two or three years more. Okay, okay. So you finished your business degree, and then like your first yes. idea was to join Poker Strategy in Gibraltar. <laughs> How did that go? <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. No, I was like. I, 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 I wasn't the best student. I didn't have the best um, grades. And, and I, I studied quite a while. So I think I wasn't like uh, the one everybody was looking for to, to hire. Um, and then it was funny, like on Poker Strategy, um, they just um, were looking for someone like content manager, I think it was. Um, and was like, uh, was like, okay. I, I, I'm still always on PokerStrategy.com all the time, like reading the forum, watching videos, discussing. I had lots <laughs> of friends found to PokerStrategy.com. So I was like, okay, I, I have to I, I have to get there. I have to get be higher there. The funny thing is, by the way, I, I sent my application and um, I heard nothing from them. Like, and I was honestly, I was a perfect match because I was, I was a, a decent you no know, limit player. I was a mid six oh. grinder, a successful mid six grinder. I was an active member, um, but they, they, they never replied to my um, application. So after a while, I don't know when, like a couple of weeks, I, I reached out to um, Lutz Enke. I don't know what his nickname was. Um, his nickname uh, was... Um, I, I don't remember. Yeah, Lutz. Uh, Lutz, Lutz Enke. He was a C, COO or something, or like chief operating officer. I don't know if that was a term, but kind of. He was like upper management. Um, and he said, oh, yeah. Uh, it seems like it got lost, so he forwarded to from HR. I don't remember her name, by the way. She was also German, which moved to Gibraltar before. I think Herbert, you might yeah. remember. Was it, was it Linda? No, not Linda. Uh, she was uh, Dorothy. Before Linda. She was Dorothy. Oh, uh, uh, might be. But Honestly, I don't know. But then, 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 then she she reached out to me because it was like it was a match. You're like, you know, I I, I had a decree, not not the perfect one, but it got a decree. And then I had a, a quick phone call with her. And then after, I don't think pr pretty fast, they invited me to do to Gibraltar for an, an interview, which was pretty cool, of course, like getting f uh, flying into uh, Gibraltar from Germany, having a job interview, uh, which is a pretty cool thing. Um, and yeah, that, that was went pretty fast. So I had some um, talks with um, Otto yeah. Tobias, which was the head of, um, is it head of he, education? He was head of education. I don't yes. know. Um, yeah okay head of education and he had some and he also had some tasks for me i think i had to to answer some community questions he said like okay this is the community and someone is posting this how would you answer yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of yeah. something like this some kind of yeah. which was like <laughs> crazy okay and then i did it pretty well because it's basically i i, I was uh, writing the forum all the time um so this was rather yeah. easy and then um, they were, and by the way, the funny thing was I, I didn't eat the whole day. I, I flew, flew there and they instantly put me into the interview. So I came there like at two or something. I, I didn't eat at, I when, when once the interview was done at like, I don't know, 5 p.m. or something, then I, I, I still hadn't eaten anything. So I was pretty starving, but it, it, I think it went pretty well. But then they asked, uh, should I, should you get your taxi or something? I said, no, no, I walk. And the, the, the hotel was uh, on the upper side uh, of, of um, Gibraltar because they didn't have any other hotel. And I didn't know. And it was really hot. It was like in <laughs> August. And then I had to go with my backpack and walk all the way. I, I didn't find any taxi in the way. I was like sweating like crazy. Had to Gibraltar is small, but if you still have to go and you're hungry and starving, I, I still had to go all the way till I found it. It was like uh, crazy. Okay. But... Um, so and, and in the evening, in the evening, they already called me and said like, which I should have known. It was, it went pretty well. Said my, my, um, my, um, successor, not, not successor. The one who's doing the job right now, um, is doing a, a, a goodbye party. Do you want to join? Which I said like, okay, I just came to the hotel. I just ate, I think some chips or something. Um, I was totally uh, exhausted. Said, no, I don't want to come. Uh, I, I'm really exhausted. Um, and that's, but then I should have known that they, they, they want to hire me. And then basically I flew home, I think the next day, 
That's basically the story. Okay. okay. Uh, a little bit shorter than my story. We talked about this in the, the previous episode because I had an interview in Hamburg, a second interview in Hamburg, and then another interview in, in Gibraltar. And But my experience was, was the same. Like I arrived, I had my interview, and the assessment tasks, like whatever, you had to review a hand or yeah. write some stuff. Uh, and then in the evening, there was a party. And I thought, no, what, what a coincidence, because I didn't know there was always a party going on. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, the, the interview, well, you flew home, and then you packed your stuff and uh, started. When did you start? Do you remember? O October 2009. Okay. Yeah, and it was, was pretty cool, because we had uh, our own apartment, which right in Gibraltar, I think they had some office apartment, so you didn't have to find something. They instantly, like, you had this apartment, which was pretty cool, um, uh, which was nice. And by the way, after a while, I, I came home, and there was another a person uh, in my apartment was like, oh, who are you? And then, then I recognized it's like, sometimes there are several employees who get their apartment, so it's all apartment for your own. If they have someone else, so you, you join with us. You have some roommate, which was like, but they didn't notify me first, but it was fine. It was pretty cool to have like you don't have you can check out to find your own apartment then in Gibraltar, which was pretty nice. Uh, what were your, your first experiences when you started uh, working in Gibraltar? Uh, like you, you came from Germany, I believe the climate was quite different, even in October. Uh, what What do you remember? Like what What is standing out uh, in uh, your first month? Yeah, and what I remember, I don't know the first month. I think. Ah, but, but I, I can, I can uh, explain something else, which I think is quite interesting. Uh, I, I, I mentioned I was a, a member at PokerStrategy.com, but they, 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 they cancelled my account because I was, I was like doing some affiliate stuff, some minor stuff, so like you know, and I sent some of a message, and then they, they cancelled my account, and they weren't aware of that. I, I mentioned it in the interview to Tobias. I mentioned, oh, here's my account is right now cancelled because I did some affiliate. It's not something big and maybe like I, I did it to three people you know like for example here if you want to play there and make like 50 bucks or something I don't know but it was like they had this policy which is fine so I got cancelled then after they hired me and um, I got to Gibraltar then once I think um, Korn and I think also Lutz came to me and also Tobias said like oh we have an issue there uh, you you were you were doing some affiliate stuff on Poker Strategy. We don't allow. And I said yes. I, I mentioned that in the interview. Oh yeah, that's a problem. We have to consider if we have to. Uh, I don't know if we're going to say fire or if you cancel the, the 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 job for you. It was like oh super. I just came to Gibraltar like for two weeks now and put I picking because I I told them it's not like I I I, I said I don't mention it to them. Um, but in the end, that went pretty. Then they went okay, and we discussed it, and they said okay. And then I, I, I could continue working there, so this was fine. But what I remember, I think in the beginning, I lived in Gibraltar, an apartment with two um, roommates, which was quite difficult because they were like uh, kind of special, but like like everyone is like me as well. But it's still like you have to get used to it. But which was like um, new to me was like. And I think it was like the, the rainiest winter they had like in 50 years. It's it was like years. really, uh, it was so, so, so it's not raining like it used to Germany. It's like, and not raining like it used to in Hamburg. It's like even, even worse. I think the good thing was most of the time it was raining in the evening or in, during the night. And once you have to go to the office, it basically stuck, but it was not, it wasn't really pouring. It was like raining cats and dogs. It was like the worst. That's what I remember. And uh, as if the, the streets were flooded and everything it was crazy. Yeah, yeah, the, the the climate in Gibraltar and uh, Andalusia and general in the in the south of Spain is really crazy because basically from mid March to mid of October you don't see even a cloud. It's always sunny, uh, and then in the winter, like that that shifts and and it can rain like insanely, like for a long period of time, and it really pours it down. Uh, okay, so uh, you mentioned you lived in Gibraltar. Did you ever live on on the Spanish side? Yes, like I, I think, like I was like living with roommates and was like, this is not my thing. I think I basically never lived with roommates and like once I said like, okay, I want to, I'm, oh, then I lived not in the like the what was the nice city, Alcadesa and stuff. Alcadesa, yes. Yes. So, so, so the grand was a little bit farther. Like uh, yeah, yeah. I think this was a really nice. I was living basically in La Línea de la yes. Concepción, 
the uh, basically that, that's not the nice sound but it's basically you can walk so i basically could walk to the office like go over the border which i think later on got an issue because they made it more complex because of the issue spain and um, yes. gibraltar uh, or the uk ha are having the government but that was, was based pretty pretty easy just showing your passport going through which was really easy so i had like a like i don't know 30 minute walk to the office which was yes, cool yes uh, maybe because people who didn't live or, or, or visited Gibraltar, they don't know can you explain a little bit how that walk went like you're in one city and how do you get to Gibraltar? because that's that's really amazing and interesting yeah, yeah. And the funny, by the way, Gibraltar is really small. Like I think you can you can walk around Gibraltar in one day easily. Um, and the funny thing is, like like the border, like you used to, there are lots of people coming from Spain which are working there during the day, and it's basically just showing your passport. And then you have to get, go because um, it's stri straight through the airport. And so if a if a plane is landing or starting, you're close, and the people are standing there waiting till till it started or till it landed. Then the the, the 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 rigid goes off, and um, you can go through again. It's like really crazy. And lots of people are walking. There's also a bus, of course, but lots are going with, with bicycle yes. or with bike, uh, and it's crazy. It's a really small airport. It's like really one one landing area, I guess. That's uh, it. Yeah, and the 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 airfield is so small that only special pilots can land there. They need a, a sort of military license to to be allowed to land there but th that's really crazy because everyone knows like in the countryside uh, the, the trains and then the bus go down and the train passes and in support it's like the the airplane like passes like the the bus go down and then you have to to wait sometimes until the, the plane lands and everyone uh, off boards and then uh, you head over uh yeah and you pass uh, a border too which is a little bit crazy yeah. that not everyone can say this like you go you walk to to your to the office and and pass a border with and and i think a couple of years later they made it really hard so you had to kind of wait time, a couple of hours sometimes just to 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 get through the to border i think they they made it hard on them i think even like one or two years after i left yes, I think, yes. I, i remember colleagues mentioned yeah there, there were some former colleagues. Uh, diplomatic issues uh regarding the sea like the, uh, which part of the sea belongs to Gibraltar and which part of of spain and uh, like there were different like even treaties and all the treaties and the one side insisted on one and then there were was diplomatic uh um well issues and that affected a lot uh the the border controls and uh yeah and at the time uh you you had to queue Did you ever have problems passing the border? Honestly, I don't think, I think I, I don't ever. I think it really was really like showing your passport and they didn't even look. It was basically that I, I, I can't remember having any issues. Sometimes I went by bus if like if it was raining a lot, but usually I, 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 I just walked. And I think it would be perfect to, to bike there because it's so easy, but I never had a bike, so I just walked, which was rather easy. But uh, guys, uh, guys, uh, let me join the conversation because I'm, uh, yeah, I'm yeah. having some questions actually because some of the stuff you're talking about, I, I, yeah, you, I don't you'd... know, and I, I think it's it might be interesting for some uh, for some poker players and maybe even just guys who are interested in poker. Is I just actually googled it and it seems like Chris Moneymaker won the WSOP 20 years ago exactly 20 years ago oh so it's 2003 and uh, seems like like uh, most of uh, most of the poker players um started playing after he won it as a first amateur and then obviously uh, most of us started to play in home games and then found the site i actually also googled uh free uh, free uh, free starting money And I never found poker strategy by Doyle's room. I found Doyle's room. I got money there. I think I got money on Euro poker, and I lost it all. I lost it all. You even actually, I remember a funny story is that on party poker, you you got free money as well, but it wasn't through poker strategy. Let, let me tell you the story because it's interesting. I think you might know who 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 offered the money. Basically, you had to sign up with a mobile phone number. And a friend of mine 
who played Command Conquer before with me, he told me about it. And we signed up, we got 50 bucks. And then we we were just losing it to each other, basically. <laughs> and uh, he made a new account and we got the money again. And one funny story is that I actually lost the money with a with four of a kind to a straight flush to him. So it, it couldn't be it couldn't be more real. Um, but eventually I got a call. I got a call from some company and they said, well, you created an account. Can you please verify your name? And I don't remember the name I used. I think I, I think it was a workmate. I was working back then in a supermarket part time. So I made up names and I told them, I think it was uh, yeah, Mr. Adelberg. And he was like on the phone, mm, no. <laughs> uh, and I think you got 50 euros or even 70. I'm not sure. Back then I was thinking about, you couldn't buy just, just, a, just a SIM card. Like you couldn't, you, you had, I was, I was calling, well, not many had a yeah. phone even back then. So it was a bit, nowadays you would just, uh, so I'm wondering uh, who, which side it was. I, I don't think it was poker strategy, but uh, that's, that's an interesting, interesting thing I remember. But what I wanted to know, uh, so, so there is like one question, if you guys know who else offered free money on, on party poker. And the other question is, it seems to me that poker strategy was a really serious business. Like when I started working for poker strategy and because I know so many poker players, it always seemed like what any business that poker players run is, is like, I don't know, it's, they run it not so, not so professional, but, uh, from what I, from what I'm hearing here is that poker strategy was very serious, especially if you're Clement saying that you had an account, which was, which was like an affiliate account. And they like, I know companies, real companies, like my company, my boss would say, who cares? Just give him a new account. The guy is working now for us. So, and it was, so it was like really serious. Why was it this way? And what, what would you say? Was it like a really, really strict company? Um, or was it like a, it must be a startup at the time and how many employees were in Gibraltar? I, I, I think it, it fell to pro professional, but I think Herbert will agree with me. If you, if you think back about the time, it was like lots of young people doing what they always did. Like we all played poker, Herbert played poker, Tobias played poker, all the guys, which the management, I think Lutz didn't play, but everybody else was a poker player. So they did what they did in their, in their free time, did that. And, and it was making lots of money. So I think there was something like, and they was spending lots of money because it was more and more money coming in. And I think it was like, they recognized, but it wasn't run so professional. It was I, In the end, I think it was a startup culture, I would say. But what do you um, think, Herbert? I, I, I partly agree and partly disagree because uh, yes, it was a startup culture, totally. Uh, I, I never worked in a, such a young and vibrant and dynamic um, environment. Um, but on the other hand, uh, the, the, like the way the company was set up was really clever. Uh, and, um, actually when, when I came, when I started working, I believe I was content manager, content writer too. Uh, I was not really good at poker. I was good at writing and other stuff. And I believe that was the, the hiring policy a little bit. Um, at, at poker strategy in, in all areas, it was, it was a business and the owners, they, they, they knew that that is a business. And there were many people who didn't even play poker or didn't know about poker, which was in the other hand, funny because obviously the guys who played poker, they were in touch with the, the huge community. And so the, the, the entire community, they thought like poker strategy, it's only poker players, uh, but there, there were cooks and uh, reception ladies and uh, and all all the, the the business backbone. There were designers who didn't know anything at all. There was a marketing department. They didn't know much about poker. But overall, it it was uh, really well well organized. It was a, a very well well running machine, uh, and very uh, there was a lot of oil in the machine, uh, and. Uh, 
just just if you look at how how quickly poker strategy scaled when i arrived it was in gibraltar in february 2009 i was employee number 11 in gibraltar obviously there were some other uh, wow. um, like the developers were, were in Hamburg wow. Wow. still because poker strategy moved to gibraltar actually at, at that time but in gibraltar i was number 11 employee number 11 uh, i still remember that and one year later, there were already 140 or 150 uh, people working in Gibraltar. And that, that, that's insane if you think about it, because... Uh, I think it was even more like when, when I was leaving, like I think beginning in 2011, so end of 2010, I was like always like 250 people. And, and they did this, the startup thing, which happens all the time, still happens. They, they they were scaling like crazy, working money like crazy. So they, they were building up their heads. They were hiring, hiring, hiring. And then there was some some cut because they had, like, I think they came up to like 250, but I don't remember, but it was around like yeah, this. Yeah. And then they had to cut one day, like 10 to 20% got cut like instantly. I think it was after I left. Maybe it was, yeah, I think well, it was when, after. When did they leave? Um, January 2011. Okay, okay. Yes, uh, that was after. Uh, a couple months after, yes, yes, I, guess, I believe right? uh, it, uh, the, the famous Black Friday, uh, when the FBI closed, um, yeah, uh, must be Black Friday, full tit poker. I believe it was what was it, March or April? Uh, was, you know, yeah, it must, must be uh, around, uh, around that. And then, obviously, with all the poker money frozen, uh, the company had to to, to react uh, to this, unfortunately. But yeah, and, and by the way, which is also interesting, which Vladimir mentioned, I think. Poker strategy was starting with only party poker, like like you said, the fifty. They started with five dollars. I already got fifty dollars, but then they 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 scaled a lot. Like they added poker stars, fulted all this. What I don't know. What, what was this? B win and all the others. So they basically were affiliates of all poker networks. Also, like I don't micro gaming and whatever what was what was called. All those they all had affiliates who could get their money there. Was scaling like crazy. So they were like, it was really really good job. So you're right there. They were really, really doing a great job there, like doing it fast and access, successful. Okay, okay. Yeah, money was all over the place. I actually remember a story when I was in, in Vegas for two months, two million. Um, another guy who was with me, um, we were at a cake poker party. Does yeah. anyone, do you yes. guys remember? I was, cake I poker? was like, I was like one of uh, those grinders who was looking like at the the software was bad, but the player was bad, and I was like, okay, the players are bad. I go there. So I, I know all those micro <laughs> yeah, like yeah, cake yeah. poker and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so it was a cake poker party. It was in in I don't know thirteenth floor, with with a pool, a big pool on the balcony. On a, I've never seen that before. So it was like thirteenth um, floor pool outside on a balcony with with so many women. They I don't know. They were just invited. It was a boss of cake poker was there as well, and and the guy who was with me. He was just trying to get him drunk to actually get more rag back. I still remember that. He was talking with him and like, oh yeah, you know, let's can you give me a better deal? I'm playing so much on the side. And the boss, I don't know, he was just see. There was so much money back then in the game. I didn't care about rake back. I didn't even notice when the rake back came but in. But for you, it's like um, you, you were like you were like a high stakes, right? For me, it was like a number which was interesting, but yeah. I think the stakes you were playing, I think this is right back. You can basically ignore it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I should have still got a really good deal, but I wasn't. I wasn't as professional about it. I was just like many people are saying. It was just a game for us. We were some people were very strict and knew that they would leave the game in four years, but I was just playing and enjoying it. But uh, yeah, he was he was he wanted a better rake back deal, and I remember uh, having a discussion about a time bank. I think it was a time bank because Full Tilt had the best software, and Cake Poker was just so bad. And I told him, "Can't you just implement time bank?" And he told me, "Well, that it's so expensive; it's not undoable, basically." So m many sites, including Party Poker, people were playing on Party because it was so soft, but not because of the software. Um, I, I realized it's, it's kind of, kind of but, tough but to, um, 
from what Implements I heard, the, that was not like that. the reason. I like I heard that story about uh, party poker. Uh, I don't know if it's true. I cannot verify it, but that's what I heard. Many many people told uh, party poker, "Hey, your software just sucks. Like it's unplayable." And the the develop design leader, how, how uh, his position was called, I don't know. He said, "We leave." It like this on purpose because players don't okay. care but good players do so by having a shitty software like that was their strategy i don't know if it's a valid strategy or not uh, but basically what they were saying is they protect the weaker players and keep them playing and uh, keep the sharks away because uh, you couldn't multi-table like you could on other sites on full tilt. So you had to play one, two tables, and that limited a little bit the, the options for more professional players. That's what I heard. I don't know if it's true. Yeah, yeah, it would make sense because the only sites that really did what players wanted was full tilt. Like they would, you could you could get your own table. Uh, you could, you, I remember a story where I think House of Life was playing against Ivy and he he said that's too low. 2K, 4K, I'm not gonna play that. Give, give, give me a higher team of bet. bigger stakes, please. And Ivy, Ivy called and said, okay, 5K to 10K, whatever, we're gonna do it. And uh, on full tilt, like one funny story of of actually Kranz told me that he's gonna be a um a guest on our podcast. He's he told me they were transferring money like 750k in just two seconds they didn't even do a security check they transferred almost a mill between players just yeah yeah it was uh, i i still am trying to think of a business that was around in the past 15 years that's 50 years that's similar was, to poker was like, like everybody was like making like crazy money by the way i just just um i don't know if everybody knows the the two month two million you just mentioned i think it was basically the first kind of social media it was like grants i remember you just mentioned i don't know if i think it was four guys but i only remember grants they were like being in vegas like living in their own house and recorded i think was it shown on youtube or whatever i don't know but it kind of like yeah they had they had they had a deal with G4 or whatever. It was Kranz, Ansky, oh, yeah. uh, White Lime, and um, Flawless Victory. And actually, uh, the, the Flawless Victory is Brian Roberts. He back then even said, like what you're Herbert saying is that Party Poker didn't want good players. He said that that the, the whole uh, poker education business is way too cheap. A video should cost like 5K for anyone because... That's why he never made any video. I think he did maybe, maybe when 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 he quit. But um, yeah, they did. It was also funny in Vegas. It was in a house, and it was two floors, and they had an elevator in a house. Two floors, and I figured, all right, yeah, Americans, they just have the money. Vladimir, you just gave me the, the perfect uh, transition to to my next topic: uh, the prices for videos. Because how did you come to Poker Strategy, Vladimir? Who hired you? <laughs> yeah, uh, Clemens actually hired me. I remember uh, it was after two months to a million, I, I started making videos for Deuces Cracked. And Clemens got to me in touch, I think, via Skype. I think they were all using Skype. Yeah, Skype Maybe was the was th was thing th at the time, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And offered me uh, a deal for making videos, and I... Yeah, I was very happy actually with that. I I really enjoyed it because I was studying to become a teacher anyway. So it was like a, a pretty good way and I enjoyed it doing it. Yeah, it was, that was a really, really, really good time because back then, I think on Poker Strategy, it was it was a time where Poker Strategy also got, the, the players improved mm. a lot at, at that time. Uh, because if we think about what the what coaching sites were around, Deuces Crack, card runners and stuff, and they had the best yeah. coaches. And then uh, Puka Strategy also moved into I think they direction. also, what they did great, like uh, Herbert mentioned, was scaling. They scaled perfectly internationally. They just started with German and they 
they got the Russian market. I think they tried China, which didn't work that well, but they did all over Europe and Russia. I think if you're like a, 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 a relatively successful low mid six grinder in Russia, it's lots of money. And then the, the tape games got tougher. But by the way, what you mentioned, um, as I was responsible for the, the, the videos and I think, yeah, videos for German and English. And I was always like looking for uh, video producers like, um, like I mean, like you said, because the the high stakes, the really good players say like doesn't make sense because it, it it's not worth for us. And there was like uh, checking everywhere. Like I think I found you on uh, the two plus two forum. And the the interesting thing is, you wonder what the German guys who wasn't active on the poker strategy forum. You was like out of it because we were like the poker stroke strategy forums uh, focus or cosmos, which like everybody's saying like every German guy is on poker strategy, but you weren't. You were really successful, but you were mostly in the two plus two forum. And you were like, like you said, like use is correct. And you were um, a guest in the two months to millions, which just just to get an idea for everyone who's like not old enough to know, it was like the the, the most popular high stakes players uh, known. Everybody was like they were like celebrities. They were like I think uh, twenty or something. They were doing crazy stuff and side bets and you were like invited. So you were like part of this high stakes there. So it was like uh, really uh, lucky that I, I found you on 2 plus 2, reached out to you and um, got you as, an, as a video producer, which was pretty successful and also entertaining videos, which I remember which was really cool. It was like tough, get some really successful high stakes player to do videos was um, really yeah. difficult. Clemens, those times. Clemens, would you say Vladimir was an easy hire or Insider Inside 19 was an easy hire for you? Uh, I I think I think I I, I don't remember. I, I, but I think re basically went went pretty smoothly. I think I reached out to two plus two, send a message. I don't know. I, I if I you mentioned that you're German, I don't know. Maybe I didn't know. I just reached out to you because I was doing German and English videos. So maybe I didn't even know that you were German. Uh, when I think about it, I think you, I didn't even know you were German. And then we we talked on Skype, and then I recognized, oh, you're German as well, which is perfect. <laughs> Um, I think it was rather easy. I think I, I, I he, he, Vladimir wanted to do it. I think, of course, we want to do it. I think the videos uh, we just did, like just to 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 see if it works, because you can be a great player, but you, your videos can suck, of course, because it's like explaining it. It's different. It's like you can be a super good poker player, but you can't explain it properly. No you comment. Can't no explain comment. Explain your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> but but Vladimir was really good. So it, I think he, you could learn something, and the video was entertaining. And he was also one who played high stakes. I think he showed also high stakes videos. Some saying like they were doing low stakes, and they didn't show their way of thinking. So because they didn't want to do it. So I think it was uh, like um, not. A, I wouldn't say an easy hire was just a great hire. I think one of the the the, the, the greatest I did. I would say. D definitely, definitely. I remember the story a little bit different. The, to draw the bigger outlines, uh, like poker strategy was growing. There were many, many mid-stakes grinders, and everyone was was shouting and crying for we want high stakes players. And then poker strategy contacted the high stakes players and were like, okay, uh, what do we want? A half an hour video? Okay, 10k. And and uh, yeah, and you you couldn't do business like that because obviously that's not sustainable if you want like to, to have like. A daily, daily video content uh, that that uh, was too expensive, and it was quite a juggling to finding the the right people, um, even who were able to do it. Because I remember some candidates who were great poker players, but really, really couldn't explain at all what they were doing. And um, also, like when, once once uh, did powerpoints, yeah. you remember, like you, they they just should do something. It was yeah. like like a kindergarten kid kid doing a powerpoint i think you 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 did basically the powerpoint and you were shocked like seeing it and i think you had to do it do it all <laughs> over again it was like um like really bad yeah. well well for the for the exclusive and high stakes producers a poker strategy took some extra mile <laughs> let's uh, let's put it like this yeah. in, in uh, Providing support in in, in video uh, creation yeah. or content creation and, and, and plus and, and also yeah. like we had to do a huge quantity like just I think we had to do like two English videos every day which was meaning like sixty uh, a month and also like I think two to three uh, German videos and they was like also not only no limit they had a big fixed limit community which was like kind of dying not dying but it was not that many players and also Omaha sit and go tournaments. It was really like we had to do a lot of content. So basically, 
I think around 150 videos, German and English per month, which is crazy. Yeah, I think that the, the, the story back then was that high stakes players, they opened their own training sites. If I think about card runners and everybody who was playing high stakes, I think they got a share. Uh, they, they were not getting paid hourly because uh, Brian Townsend and all those guys, they just wouldn't make any videos. Um, I remember asking Brian Townsend about PLO coaching and he said it's just 3K an hour and because otherwise he, he's just going to go for the Iron Man that he's training for because he, he wants that much money. So if you wanted him to make a video, obviously you would have paid that much. And that was when he didn't play anymore. So when he was playing, he probably was charging 10K or more. So there were like no players who would do videos. Um, and as said, poker players were just lazy. They would just grind. They would, they would be like, oh, well, I have to record. Oh no, come on, let, let me fire up some tables and just play. And I was actually, uh, there were, there were uh, a thread on 2 plus 2 where you could offer coaching. It was free back then. And I was offering coaching. I was already co I already coached like hundred guys before I got to poker strategy, um, and I remember I was one of the of the more active. I just enjoyed doing it, and um, yeah. And for poker strategy, I remember it was a really strict plan: how many videos to deliver, because you were releasing like weekly. I think I did um, in German, English, and then they were even translated four tables. And stuff like that was well, and yeah, I didn't. I knew about poker strategy, but I never joined the forum before because, yeah, two plus two it just had all the yeah. wisdom. It was, it was just um, the, the place to be, and even and even deuces like you could post on deuces cracked and get replies from crans what to do in a spot. I mean, that's free right. coaching, yeah, nowadays. It's maybe it's happening with, with Phil Galfond. I don't know, but yeah, it was a different time back then. Uh, uh, Vladimir, you did you visit ever in Gibraltar? Nope, no, no, you never. were never there. So never. today, like we have Clemens and you have me. So because I, I, I know fairly precisely how the community thought about the people who worked in the poker education department uh, at poker strategy so maybe before we uh, shed light on the this story like how did you see like the, the guys you were ent interacting with like what was the impression what we were doing all day long when we talked to claimants or you talked to me planning the the video stuff so what was your impression what we were doing there yeah like i said i'm really i actually yeah I thought you were guys just doing it part-time. So it wasn't a full-time job. Um, because back then I just couldn't couldn't imagine that that poker is like real, <laughs> that you're like doing it as a real, uh, I mean, you could play anytime, you could work anytime. Um, and I think I've seen some pictures of poker strategies office and I was really surprised because I know that uh deuces cracked and all that uh, and Cartrunners didn't have an office. Actually Cartrunners were um biggest sponsor of the WSOP two thousand, I don't know, eleven, just before Black Black Friday. Uh so we were like very excited and unfortunately Black Friday happened. Um and they had an office probably uh, but I couldn't even figure out how party poker was working. I did have it. Did they have an office? It was online, so I figured it's 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 yeah. I think it's it's difficult to understand that poker forums require a lot of work, and uh, it was the internet. I, it was just, I think <laughs> I, I think you know, for Herbert was the same as for me. If you was a poker player, it was basically like. In the evening, I I I read two plus two reached out to you, you know, sitting on the couch. And on on uh, on Saturdays and Sundays, I still came to the office. Uh, Tobias was there sometimes too, and I just played. So I I sat I sat on my desk, and and I cried it, you know. I I got to the office, I cried it during the, during um, the weekend. 
uh, was basically I, I was like I, I think it was a, the poker lifestyle. You know, your friends were playing poker, you were playing poker, you were reading about poker during your job. You were going home still thinking about poker, like okay, should I reach out to this one? Oh, this one is cool. I will reach out. Maybe he can work for Poker Australia. It was like basically there was no uh, like you say like work life balance. It was basically for me it was basically the same. Yeah, it seems like it was a hobby yes. for everybody. It wasn't, I, I would also say it was not a real, like w what I'm doing nowadays, I'm, I'm teaching people how to find a, a satisfying job and I'm telling them that the job, it, it should be fun. And so it's not a job anymore. I mean, if you are working for Volkswagen and you are just doing the same thing over and over again, it's really tough. I but poker strategy and on and and especially poker you were lear learning every day something new so it was really 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 interesting stuff and yeah i, I could just uh, skype to herbert or you clements and you guys would answer it was um fairly yeah because we were simple. online 24 7 and but 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 but, but yeah. herbert is right <laughs> yeah, there yeah. was some which which didn't play poker but for example we were the content department so it was like herbert which was like playing poker, thinking poker to be us. Um, there was also Robbie, and there were some other guys who, who weren't playing poker. They were staying load stakes, of course, or even the content. They weren't that deep into into um, poker, but they still could do their job. But they like uh, some like Robbie had that to be us or all the others. They were like really just poker players, just working for poker because that what they that's what they wanted, what they want to do and that's what they did. But Herbert is right. There are lots of people which didn't have anything to do with poker, but they were doing a really good job, had um, nice decrees and everything, and doing a proper job for account management and stuff and all the other departments. So I actually have a question for you guys because I, I just realized, uh, so we were in a time where you, you have a job, you get paid, and then you're grinding. And sometimes you would just make more money grinding than you get paid by poker strategy, yeah. probably. Um, so how was it like, and you have to decide, obviously, yeah. um, do you want to, do you want to work today a lot or do you rather want to watch a video yeah. and grind some games? No, uh, no, no, no. I, I, I have poker? to intervene. I have to intervene here immediately because it was never like that. We were oh, like, okay. because we had sort of like flexible working hours but the, there was a core working hour i believe it was from nine to five and you had to be them or from from nine ten to, to three six, i don't remember so. no exactly. ten to three or something like this i would say yeah it was ten to three and everyone had to be there and during working hours we were not allowed to play oh i didn't oh, remember okay, that okay, honestly okay. So I, I didn't play but i don't know i yes. was like on the forum of course all the time as part of the job <laughs> uh, that is because like I believe even when you started, everything was growing so yeah. fast. There was like, it wasn't really controlled. And then the education department, obviously we created a lot of stuff. So sometimes like you ask, you, uh, you ask, Hey, uh, I need to write a video or, or I need to, to write an article or, or to take screenshots for a guide or record a video. And then we could do it. But basically we were not grinding. It was hard work because if you, if you see like the, the content mm -hmm. machine, uh, like we, we had running, we mentioned it before, we published mm -hmm. 150 videos a year and it was like, not like this is correct. Uh, poker strategy was available in English and German, but it was available in Russian and 16 other languages. So every content piece produced, every article was translated in, in all the other languages. Uh, and you had to obviously coordinate that stuff. You had to, to push it to the different language communities. You, you had to agree on stuff. You had to serve all the, uh, the, the membership levels all the time because there was, uh, based on the rake, uh, the, the, the members did, there was like, bronze. Uh, it was bronze. basic bronze, silver, gold, diamond. platinum, the diamond, black members, the famous and diamond. Ones. Uh, the, yeah, but the black members, they were just the, the VIPs, the overall VIPs. Yeah, so uh, it was a really interesting approach because what, uh, um, so, so was, and yeah, don't don't get me started on the Russians. Uh, I'm born in Russia myself and we have a guest from Russia, but back then you had a time when you had Russians at your table, you knew it's a good table. And the same thing with Germans. No, actually Germans, they were always 
winning players like Germans, where like you wanted Russians, um, and then it turned around, Russians were just always winning, and especially Belarus. I think Belarus is the only country who, which doesn't have any losing player, besides Monaco, because Monaco is just uh, Patrick Antonio's <laughs> only, I think. Um, yeah, but I remember when I was at, um, at, two, uh, at Two Months to Million, we were shooting some some scene and there was a guy running down the stairs and said hey brian get on your computer there's a guy sitting wants to play you so they, basically you know what i'm saying is that you 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 were always waiting for the good games and you couldn't pass them by because you would just make so much money and i remember that myself that i had to i had an exam at the university the next day and i just missed it because i played all night against one guy and uh, couldn't couldn't do the exam because I yeah I said all that right let's skip this one it's worth the money basically uh, so yeah it's uh, interesting so Poker Strategy was a really really professional company and, and for me it was like basically cool. like it was really grinding of if it's like fun and doing it part time not to 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 earn your money it was because it can be boring i think you know like even if you like except for again if you're a mid-sex grinder you play lots of tables and just just grinding and if, if, if it's something different if you're like doing it your, uh, just in your free time in your spare time or like you know you you have to play you have to make money so it was like great being a student playing poker and once i started for poker working for poker strategy i think i, I it got less and less than i played i was like still investing lots of time in poker but the the time I played got less and less, and I think it wasn't that interesting anymore because you I think you lose it sometimes. It's also like the high stakes players. I think lots of them like stop playing for years and then they coming back. I think also Phil Gelf. Maybe he wasn't that prominent, but she's getting more uh, prominent right now. Back again, is doing videos and the blog and stuff. I think, but I think uh, it, it's it's tough to do it for a long time and yeah. and as a profession. Yeah, yeah. In right. hindsight, at, at least for me, and I believe for Clemens too, it was it was almost a dream. Like we were passionate about poker, uh, and we did like poker mm -hmm. all the time. Like okay, we, like at work we released poker articles and, and 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 hired coaches and released videos and translated stuff and talked to the others. And in the free time, we grinded and made a lot of parties. So that was great uh, for you too, Clemens. But why did you decide to leave? To leave poker strategy, what was your motivation? Yeah, right um, it was basically I think Gibraltar is nice and the weather is nice, but it's really small and the people come there just to work. And I had my girlfriend uh, uh, in Hamburg uh, and was like, and I also wonder. I I just also t told um, Tobias I I wanted to go more into the business part, so I wanted to go more on the like key account manager thing. Which they said no, they want you. We want you as a content manager. So I was like, no, I, I, I will be leaving, and I want to go back to Germany because I think the, the 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 people being in Gibraltar are, are not there that long. I was like there around, not close to one and a half years, and then I was like, I want to go back to Germany. Um, so so I quit poker strategy. That was in two thousand eleven, yes, January two thousand eleven, uh, just before yeah, twelve years ago. A long time. Uh, uh, for for personal reasons, yeah. I understand. And what was your professional perspective? Uh, did you find another job soon, or did you study? What did you do after no, that? No, I, I, by the way, I did it pretty stupid. I, I know others who just said like, okay, they want to do it remotely, which I would have could have done as well. I think if I just they just wanted to give me a huge raise, where I was like, no. But I think if I said like I can do it remotely, I think they would have agreed. But I wanted to have a clear cut, which wasn't smart, uh, mm -hmm. by the way. Um, so I basically left it, got home, got no job. Then there was lots of others, like um, there was a German counterpart, which was called Card Coaches. I don't know if everybody rem anybody remembers, it was um, uh, by this poker player who, German poker player was high stakes player who, who died, I think. Yeah, I remember that. A nice was, guy, was, I met him in, in Vienna. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I met him as well. Yeah. It, that was yeah, uh, Johannes Strassmann, Strassmann. Really yes, nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. and he had pros. He had many pros, yeah. and the site was really well built. It was a yeah. decent. 
he's inside. And so, so they invited me to yeah, Vienna. He, I just uh, was there, met Johannes, which was a really cool and nice guy. All the others, there were like three people there. So Johannes was basically giving the money and the other were doing the business. So I said, uh, okay, they didn't do so. I did some content then for work for them on the site. I didn't move there, just worked from home, but only for three months, basically. Um, and then um, I, 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 I started to get my first job in the real world. I was like, um, nothing, nothing fancy, nothing interesting. Osram, which is like famous for light vibes. I don't know. I think they do more like, I think basically light. So I started as a data and information manager. I built their, their intranet kind of. It was like my, my first step into the real world. And then I, I been there for a while. And then I, 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 I wouldn't say, man, maybe climbed up the ladder a little bit. So I got into um, the product management role. Um, at um, United Internet, and this was my. This is still what I'm doing. I'm still um, working in this product space, like as product lead, product owner, which is known now. So basically, building um, or leading teams which are building uh, websites and apps, which I'm doing for quite a while now, like I think ten years. Okay. Yeah, time is passing by yeah, so quickly. Definitely. And um, we all are missing the and, poker strategy. And, and by the way, I was like, I was like, like I think I was like 28 when once I or 29 when I got to poker strategy, and I was like more of one of the the older guys. I think, yeah, but you're a little bit older than me, yeah. but only a couple of years, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was the yeah, granddad. It was the like time. really startup. It was like <laughs> I was 29. Was like really everybody's um, younger than me. And also, like you know, the 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 the, the grinders, the, the 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 huge successful players, they were all like uh, five or even ten years younger than me, because like you know, so, so I felt already old there. Yeah, when when I started at poker strategy, I was thirty one, but uh, I felt like a, a dinosaur there uh, because everyone was so young. Like even the more experienced. Like even I think Korn is younger than me, I guess. I think Korn is younger than me. I think, I think oh, one or two yeah. years, I think he's younger than me. A little bit more successful than me, but and a little bit younger. Uh, so you said you, you lost the passion a little bit uh, about poker in general when you, when you left. Did you, did you play? Did you, did you still play poker? Mm -hmm. And do you play um, poker now? I, 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 I continue playing. I think I like I switched in, in poker strategy. Like once I still have worked for poker strategy, I started like I think you remember I switched to Omar because like a little bit sick of Nolan, but I was like maybe I was like in the end I was like um, a break even player. I don't know if it was bad luck to be honest. Maybe it was just bad play in the end. So I w was never that good. I, I continued a little bit playing there, but once I started um, um, get, getting to the the real job world and then having a girlfriend and then couple years later having a family and stuff so i basically stopped playing poker in around 10 years ago 2013 or something and never played again but uh, um, like a couple of months ago i i just started was like okay i, I have to try it again and then of course like um, like like Latvia mentioned now there are apps and everything so you can download there was no smartphones of course you had phones but the iphone was like invented in 2008 so nobody had it i had this Phone I remember in poker uh, at poker strategy by the which I bought which was like a Sony which you could hear music or which was like I was so proud of it. I I I, I crushed it like once we played um, <laughs> football at the soccer at the beach or football at the beach because the the whole display got scratched and I could throw it away like I you had it for like a week. But it was like I could music I could use it as an MP3 player which was awesome. So there were no apps and then I um. I, I think it was like, okay, I will try playing poker again. I like, I, I don't know. I think I um, used poker, poker stars because it was easy. There was an, and it's not that easy, by the way, to, to send money to it. It's like a pain. And I was talking about 100 euros. I had to create an, a net teller account again. Is it net teller? Yeah, I think so. Or net teller or someone, some, I don't know, someone else. Net teller was big at the time and there was someone else. Uh, well, we, by the way, we are not affiliated yeah. with that teller. <laughs> right. I think it was Skrill. I think it was yep. money, 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 bookers. money bookers money and net teller. Like, money... I don't know if they still exist, to be honest. But it yeah. was really complicated. Yeah, Skrill. I think Skrill it was really complicated. Yeah. To... Didn't didn't money uh, didn't Skrill become yeah, one of I the think companies? So. I think net teller and Skrill yeah. or something yeah. like this. And but it was really complicated, so I had to create a new account because my I think they just deleted it because it was inactive for I don't know ten years. 
um, uh, started playing a little bit and it was really hard. I had to pick my past, but I had to create some net teller or whatever account, um, sent their hundred um, euros or whatever, played some uh, no limit five or no limit 10 on the, on the app, on the smartphone. It was like, wow. Uh, it was okay. I played, and, and the funny thing is, like, once you start playing, you, you you sit down in the evening, and you want to play for an hour, and it's like you then you look watch, at the, and it's like three hours go, have, have passed by. You know, it was like it's it's for me it's too time intensive. I don't want to invest the time, so I basically cashed out again because it's like if you want to, you need time to do it, and I don't have the time. I don't want to invest the time. I I I don't want to, so I basically cashed out, and that's it. I still I watch the Phil Gelfon videos, and I still watch some poker views. But I think it's quite interesting. But I'm I'm passively just just watching because I think it's interesting. Also, if um, Phil Gelfon explains hands, which is quite interesting. But um, playing, I'm basically done. I guess maybe in ten years again, next try. Yeah, the story. There is an interesting story behind Netherlands. Actually, I think it was Black Friday. Um, when they closed all the American and Canadian accounts, I think maybe Canadian as well. And Neteller actually even emailed the people about them having the opportunity to cash out. And from what I've heard, they still had like 30k accounts with money left in their accounts. People just didn't cash out. And if you think about that, people had $10, $20, it's, it's over a mil easily. Same thing with Full Tilt. Friend of mine who was just playing for fun. Um, I, I remember he wanted to get coaching and, and we did a session and I'm asking, why are you raising here? And he's like, yeah, I don't know. I'm just doing it. Let me do it. <laughs> and uh, he had money on Full Tilt and Full Tilt closed and reopened and he never even logged in into his account back then. So there is a lot of money lost because of, 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 of that stuff that happened. And what your claimants are saying is that, yeah, nowadays it seems like just to log in and play some for fun uh, doesn't work anymore. Like you have to invest all your time uh, in because otherwise you're just not gonna have fun because you, you're not gonna ha win a single hand. Uh, yeah, that's gonna and, be. And by the way, I didn't have, uh, of course, you you had poker tracker and all that stuff, you know. And I didn't. I I started a couple months ago. I don't have anything, you know. And you're used to it, you know. You see, like this one is like <laughs> ra playing sixty percent of his hands or whatever. And I didn't know. I have to. I have to really pay close attention, <laughs> you know. I didn't have any poker tracker or anything. Yeah. We were like, you're not used to it. And of course, you like you if you want to want to play. Of course, there are people who just do it in their spare time and want to just play, and they don't care if they lose but if I, I if i play poker i want to do it properly uh, and then you need yeah. like you said you need to invest time yeah yeah time investment and perspective and all that matters of course right um yeah i remember that too like if you if you were playing without like a hut or something mm -hmm. without the all the database you felt like mm -hmm. blind even like you couldn't even click a, a button but l let's put that apart uh, clemens like uh, you you had a, a like an interesting professional career, but if you look back now at your time at, at Poker Strategy, how would you say oh, it was young? It was fun. Uh, uh, did it bring something for your personal development? Uh, I'm I'm, yeah. I'm curious. I, I, yeah, you think I, I, I think no. it was like great. First, like I I got to a to a, a different country, like living abroad, which is like uh, interesting. Of course, it's challenging. But I think it's something uh, worth everybody should do. And, and then you already know, like, how much, what do you like about German? Of course, like, Germans uh, complain a lot. But once you're living in another country, you, like, see, like, <laughs> Germany is not that bad. They have lots of, of course, lots of stuff is bad. But in the end, there's a lot of great stuff. But, and, and if you think about it, like, the, the, uh, like the, the responsibilities we had, like, we were in, uh, responsible for lots of money. If you're talking about, you know, like, the budgets. Which we were responsible. This was our job. We lay Tobias or or Corn or whatever, or for example, you like, as as you were my 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 lead later on, uh, you uh, allowed us to do to invest that like uh, do this. We were talking about I don't know, in the end it was like a, a six digit budget yearly, which we were like uh, responsible for. We had lots of like, 
we, we could invest our time what we were thinking um, which makes the most sense so i think this was pretty helpful and what's also like made it clear to me as i'm not a digital native i was like didn't grow up with the internet but this was made clear to me that i always want to work in the internet world and i think this was so i think lots of learnings i had right yeah yeah for me that, that counts even more uh because uh, before joining poker strategy i i worked at university basically i was a philosophy a lecturer and and then when, when i came to gibraltar like it was a different different country uh, different language different working environment and uh, an amount of of luxury i mean we can talk about the office like the office was beautiful but we had drinks lunch for, for free, free. Yeah. we had we had lunch for free we like like it it, it was amazing because that didn't exist mm -hmm. back then basically in the in the in the working world uh now it it, it has become more common but um uh, this was just outstanding in a different world and i i always think back uh, yeah it was a real nice time but so now now comes the tricky question like well, we played it soft <laughs> on you <laughs> until this very moment so if i would say you have to compress all of your time at poker strategy in in one little story what would you tell That's me a good question honestly ooh. what what i was like like uh, also what what i was thinking about which i which i really enjoyed um maybe it's not it's not a question but it's like um shout out to by the way kyle who was a designer which didn't have to do anything with poker i think you remember kyle Herr. um yeah, yeah. Hi, uh, which was yeah, yeah. which I remember, which was I like really cool which yeah. we're like uh, really having so much fun with like we 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 wanted to do some more fancy videos and then kyle created so i had an idea idea but they, kyle was basically doing all this stuff and he created some um, introduction for the videos like with comic designs and everything it was really awesome um which this this comes to my mind but other than that i think i think it's like uh, meeting um, uh, lots of like-minded people um not all that they were poker but it make it easier than poker player but from from a from a from a mind i think there was the same like learning lots of stuff and in the end if you like uh look at those poker players i think lots of them um, um did great um, in other areas as well and that's because they are just smart so if you were a successful poker player you basically had some skills i think you need patience you need to be um engaged and of course you need to be intelligent which you need for basically any job so i think this is important and that's why you see like lots of um former successful poker players having huge success not not talking about money but uh, doing great things in other areas of their life which i think so meeting great people but there's not one one story in particular which comes to mind okay well oh, fair, fair enough uh another one do, do you feel, or how would you say, did poker or your time in Gibraltar influence or change the way you, you think about life or business or work? Uh, does it still have an effect on you? Uh, did it modify your mindset and change you? Or was it just a nice episode you had um, in your I, life? Or I, 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 I think I, I, I kind of said that um, in the, the answer before. I think, yes, I think you learn a lot for life as well. Because if you're like, engaged if you put your time in if you 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 stay cool like you know like um if you work continue working sometimes working harder as the other people or not harder not working smarter and um i think this this will help you not even poker but in, in any area of life so i think and this is kind of poker i think vladimir didn't start playing high stakes he said they like hey i cash in fifty thousand euros and play like um, nl 5k or whatever so he just grinded his way up, um, and I think this is something you you that helps you for 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 every area of your life, basically. Yeah, I think it's uh, the, what what Clemens is saying. I agree with that. I think poker um, actually uh, people underestimate the mindset poker created for them because. I realize, like, I'm in a regular job now. 
and poker was real it was a very fun time but it was a very tough time grinding 10 tables four hours eight hours 10 hours uh a regular job is not like that like you you go take a coffee you, you make a phone call you are in a meeting where nobody's doing anything oftentimes and um people complain about stress and i'm like all right you you have no idea what stress is uh but i'm not talking it's a about, yeah yeah but of course there are really shitty jobs like like i said if you are just a uh, cleaning a house or scanning products in a supermarket that's that's like grinding like micro stakes um uh, or obviously if you're working um as a doctor with patients over time or as a teacher that's really tough as well but what poker did is you realized if you because you are get you're getting um rewarded very quickly if you work on your game like back then you would watch a video or you would try strategy and you would instantly move up in stakes you would realize wow something is work you can double barrel just you don't know why but it works so you're doing it and you you're learning you realize you can move forward so nowadays in business or in sports you just know you have to work and then you're going to yeah. move on and you also i think i'm thinking more more clearly not as much results oriented in real business people are very very results oriented uh it's unreal how they are well we did something oh, it's working today I, I, really really good investment that, that's that's something <laughs> so i want like, to mention as well like you said like in poker like you know you get your money and being an 80 20 favorite and you lose but it happens you didn't you did the right decision you made everything correct but you still lose it happens and also like like you said if you have the chance to do something which you have passion about just do it of course like if you have a job you're passionate about maybe not every day and it's not like i i go to every day but in the end i have a great passion for my job and if you have the chance to do that go for it i think this is the most important thing that you, that you know like you mentioned there are some people who can't who can't have, have don't have that luxury because they have to clean houses or stuff whatever but if you have this this chance uh, uh, go for what what you really like and i think this this will always make it easier for you yeah i also think that poker players understand that if you made the right decisions, the, the outcome doesn't matter. So you put your money in, favorite, four to one, and that's it. And in real business, most companies or people in general are afraid of making mistakes. So they wait for the 100%. And there are very few companies, actually startup companies, actually Amazon is working this way. So if you have an idea, they obviously they have more money, but they going to give you the, the to 200 million and you can decide uh, create a product and it can fail it's fine because they have this culture but usually um people are afraid to 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 try stuff out and poker players are we have to like we can't wait uh, I mean, back then you could be a nit and wait for a set and still print <laughs> money <laughs> but um the, the, the way the games evolved we evolved as well and i think it it um yeah it's a big plus overall i would say uh the way we are thinking nowadays right. yeah. T talking about poker we we forgot one question like do you uh, did you ever have uh, a nickname clemens like a sort of brand or did you use right, random my, nicknames my nickname on poker strategy was um uh, cb funk it's not a CB. It, in Germany, it was ah, CB yeah, Funk, but the, fun, yeah. the thing was like CB Funk because of the music, <laughs> and CB are my initials. That was. I think I had some, uh. but I, I think um, someone mentioned it. It, it. Of course, it's smart to not have the same nickname at each poker room, so nobody knows CB Funk is there. Mm. Like I know him from whatever, because that's pretty stupid. You should have some different nicknames. I had. I think it was CB Funk on full tilt as well. And poker party poker, I think you could change your nickname, but I wasn't there that 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 often because I was like like you said, I was playing on this on this poor sides with lots of bad players like I Pacific poker and like all this <laughs> stuff where the bad players were B win or not B win. There was some I don't remember all those small sides which had lots of lots of fishy players. 
but uh, from to how was radio was CB funk. Okay, no, I remember. I forgot. I actually and, and then, forgot. like I said, I had to re reactivate uh, it once I started working. I think it wasn't that wasn't that my, my real name then? Wasn't it? Didn't we have them? Some there wasn't like Clemens then, and then got. I think yeah, it was Clemens. like I think, and you was here that you had yeah. Hockebein. I remember that. And but I think yes, we got yes. renamed then, and was like uh, Tobias was hot. I think he was then then called Tobias, and me wasn't CB Funk anymore. Was called Clement. So they were aware of that. And once you like left Poker Strategy, you got returned to um, CB Funk or Hockebein or whatever. Hey, yeah, yeah, my 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 Nick Hockebein. Uh, With a three, right, uh, uh, in there as well. Uh, I, I, I actually think, don't I remember so. I, because I, I, I had some, I had some with a three on some poker sites where the the nick already was gone, so I, I chose to put a three for an e and and an i for one, uh, but yeah. Uh, do you have any questions no, for I, us? I I I I, re I really enjoy <laughs> it. And I think the, the the interesting question I have, of course, Herbert Vladimir, do you still do you still play poker? Oh, 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 you go yeah, back right the most interesting stuff. Point. So, who should start, Vladimir? Do you want to start? Should I? If you are play, yeah. Well, I, I think the last time I played is like, yeah, but by my daughter. I have a daughter now, four years old, and um, she was screaming. I still remember she was screaming a lot in the first couple months, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, I was actually grinding back then still on stars. It was the, the, the worst months of my life uh, in Levi's, um, uh, in poker, not the kid. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think I was like 40 binds below EV. I've never You're had it before, but it stakes. was. No, 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 no. I, uh, that was the last time I played uh, because they had some promotion. I think stars had some i don't know what they had you could you had to rake like an amount of 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 money and then you would get you would get some some money back and that's what i did part-time but then um i just quit because i'm working full-time and uh yeah you 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 need to i think i think some people uh, it, it either fits your lifestyle or it doesn't and uh for poker poker changed at one point where people were not just posting on two plus two, but were living together. I remember uh, Germans got really good within a year. Like they moved together. Many, many really good Germans moved together, started to study the game very hard. Um, Durr and Raptor did that back then. It's like 15 years ago, probably. Um, and I never did that. And you you have to live poker to to be really 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 good and yeah so it's like three years ago I played last time four years almost. Well, well then it's my part. My story is is very similar because when I left Poker Strategy in two thousand eleven, um, I became poker professional first, but I have two sons to now uh, 11 and seven years old and um, it was just not compatible with uh, with the poker lifestyle you have to live it you need to be free uh, and um, well i quit in 2017 um, and only played once then uh, it was a stupid story i believe i quit and then three months or four months later i said no I, I want to make some quick money so i cashed in i remember i cashed in 50 euros uh and played low stakes uh, oh. with omaha and i was i was broke after after 20 minutes and i thought no no fuck this shit i never play again <laughs> it was a stupid idea and uh and then i i never played again and yeah. the games got tougher i and, think it's not like you have like a they are, they are I think they all tough. have like um, like twenty percent or something like there's no no big fish which is doing like seeing like sixty percent of the flops anymore because of course I don't know because I didn't have the hut uh, next, uh, the ones I played but I think it was like really <laughs> like that and lots of no six grinds like we said like from from like other countries which is like 
they can make a living still grinding low stakes. Yes, I, I believe you could still wow. do money, but um, it's the age. And I felt a little bit burned out of the poker lifestyle because you, you have to be uh, on focus, uh, all the stress, handle the, the bad beats. Uh, and sooner or later, you, well, for me, like I was not that sharp anymore. And I didn't want to put in a, even more work all the time every year. Games became tougher. And I, yeah. I, I just didn't feel yeah. it anymore. Yeah, I think what's important is also you, you need to think about if you can improve <laughs> and if you can uh, evolve in that business. And many p players uh, made a side, coached. Uh, Galfond is still playing, but he is just doing lots of other stuff as well. And yeah. that way it's going to work. Yeah. But uh, just playing full-time, that's not gonna work because you get older. It's it it becomes a bit more stressful, and you have to study besides playing. That's the point. Like you really need to to work seventy hours a week. Yeah, I mean, you have to play tournaments as well because you need to look for value. Back then, you could just play any game. You were not even table selecting. It was so funny. I was just opening tables and just just mm. playing. You didn't care. Everybody, everybody had weeks, uh, leaks. And uh, nowadays, you people travel for tournaments. Even the best players have a schedule to travel. So yeah, yeah, you have to live that lifestyle. I think bots should be an issue as well. I think they were, but they weren't that good. I think once, yeah, now you can create some pretty re de decent bots, which can make money and which can't be recognized as as bot. I think this should be an issue as well. Yeah, we might even do an episode on bots because that's I mean that's like five years ago where I where I was playing on apps and there were bots and the bots were mm -hmm. winning forty big blinds per hundred just Check. against <laughs> anyone, anyone. <laughs> And there was a really bad bot. Nowadays, the bots, they're, they're clearly unbeatable. So uh, the bot that was crushing basically was 3-betting like 60%, was heads up bot, 3-betting 60%, and then just potting. And then because people are not used to defend against, uh, this, yeah, we're getting into too much strategy here. But No, but that's interesting. Yeah, that's it was, it was a simple topic. bot. It was a simple bot, just 3-betting a lot, and then people are not... not I don't know how to defend against such a big, uh, high three betting range, and the bot was crushing. It was unbelievable, uh, and a friend of mine was battling that bot, and he he found some leaks like he would min race the bot uh, on a flop or bet super small and the bot would fold. So uh, so you could make money, but it was tough. It was tough. Everybody else was losing, and um, I know that there is. Um, I know a guy who's running a bot farm. Basically, I know a guy who knows a guy, <laughs> and he said he's got he's got a team of two hundred guys in an office, and they pass the poker star security check easily. Like you cannot mm -hmm. detect it, um, and they're on every side, every side, everywhere. Yeah, so that's obviously an issue, even for high stakes. Um, there were some teachers, a cheater caught who. Uh, just had a database on the side who would run the solver in real time. I'm I'm sure that's e easily doable. So what people are doing nowadays is they're playing in um, in poker rooms which are private. So everyone who's playing must yeah must be recognizable, and that way it's safe. Um, Clemens, you, you were the very first it's guest long, uh, long we long. had. We did. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, it's it's our pleasure and our honor. But uh, what would you want to hear on on poker stories yeah. in the future? Are there any topics you want to hear? Any colleagues we we need yeah. to invite? I, I uh, think lots of them. I think you mentioned yeah. Sven, which is one of the guys. I think he started once. I he came a little bit later than us, but I think he's still working for Poker Strategy. So it's 
over 10 years now, which is quite interesting. Also, like like the the ones like Korn, Tobias Hotte, which was like uh, our boss, and and everybody else, which was like quite interesting. So lots of guys, and also like uh, former players, like I don't know, remember like lots of guys in, in the poker strategy, like Seattle, Schnippler. There are there are so many, I think, which is quite interesting. Also, like thinking about the past or, or just talking about the past, which is like quite interesting as as we did. But also, what are they doing now? Because uh, quite interesting. Maybe some are still high stakes player. Because you're if you're not into the poker scene that deep, of course you know Phil Gelfond. But uh, I think you you don't know them anymore. Maybe they are still grinders, or maybe they are having. I think um, lots of them. Kobe Yard, for example, I think which had a pretty successful company, and there are others as well. What are they doing now? Which is quite interesting. Like, uh, of course, talking about this story in the past is also like really fun. But also, like, what are they doing now? And there are, there were lots of interesting personalities in the soul poker world, and nationally only German one, but also, also of course internationally. Lots of interesting people. So I think you're not running out of content. Yeah, I agree. It's a really interesting question to what are people up nowadays to, especially because I think poker players are very, very smart. Like the, the high stakes players, I would say they're super smart, super mm -hmm. smart. Like any, uh, I from what I remember, like like you said, yeah, we were playing poker and then studying on the side and then working on the side, and somehow it worked out. Um, many many people studied really tough stuff and played high stakes, and managed to do all that in a young age. Um, so. It's interesting to see where they're going in the future and where people are right now. Because yeah. some of them, I think they're they are like maybe still in their 20s right now or even like early 30s. Because they, like you said, they were <laughs> seven, some, most of them were 18, 17, 19, 20. So they are not under age. Yeah, sometimes probably. as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But they were not of playing not. back then. They only course, started playing when they not. were uh, turned yes. 18. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, they yeah. started That's once they were 18, so they are still pretty young. Right, right. Yeah, we're going to have those guys in our podcast. And um, for our listeners, if you want to be, maybe you want to be a guest, you can uh, message us. And if you want someone to be in the podcast, let us know. We, wanna, we are um always interesting in to hear your ideas as well i believe th this closes a little bit the episode uh, i'm i'm a little bit sad that we have to stop already because there are so many questions <laughs> i still have for clement but uh, uh maybe maybe you, you can uh, make your comeback uh of course, or later. If, if you would like to but later on i think you have some other guests but later on sure why not it was it was fun i had a blast mm -hmm. Uh, so, Clemens, any last no, words? No, I, I just, I just want to thank you, uh, th thank you to to you guys that you invited me because it was on. Like I said, it was really fun, like talking about the old times, and also like like uh, the the times we have now, which is like great. And I can really recommend everybody if it was like part of this poker universe to just uh, uh, join uh, Herbert and Vladimir because um, it's fun. Uh, and I wish you the best. And, and of course, I will, I will listen to the next episodes. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Do you do we have subscribed? I, I already yet? have. And with, once I recognize, uh, I, I recognize <laughs> one thing: you can't do it on Google Podcasts, which I usually assign to. So I had to uh, sign up on uh, Spotify to follow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I read. Uh, I tried this to set up, but then I got a weird message that Google Podcasts is shutting ah, down soon. They're doing Ooh. YouTube and music. Somehow, you're right. They're switching to YouTube music. Uh, oh, and yeah. uh, it, it didn't mm -hmm. accept it. I, yeah, I yeah. submitted it, but I'm still waiting for you the You have to do YouTube reply. music oh. because they, they turn it off and they, they do it on YouTube music. I, I forgot. You're right. So sorry for that. Yeah, you can do Google Podcasts, so YouTube music. But yes, I, I already follow you on Spotify. I'm looking forward to the next episode. Okay, okay. I I right. send you the link then on YouTube Music <laughs> to, to sign up <laughs> as well. <laughs> but, do do you already done. know who the yeah. next guest is, or you don't want to say? 
we uh, we can say it. It will be Jakub. Do you, do yes, you remember? I think he was like a community manager, right? He yeah. was Polish community and he was manager. Bold, he has a bold uh, really, head, right? Really fun guy. Uh, we we don't we don't look at, at, at <laughs> serious so much. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't bold back okay. then. Uh, how how like age uh, like the years treated him? I do not know exactly, but we will find okay. out soon. Uh, we will uh, record with him soon, and I'm really looking forward uh, to many of his stories because he's uh, well, he's an amazing storyteller and just he's oh, nice. just fun. And so I'm really looking forward to this one as well. Uh, right, we uh, have we have an, we have uh, a guy uh, who is still playing, who is playing high stakes, super high stakes. We have we have a guy who used to play high stakes, and. Uh, yeah, it's it's actually I just thought about a uh, document documentary about poker strategy as well. Like, why is there no movie on on Arte, so yeah. German television yet? Because it seems like uh, you often see stuff about Amazon and Google, and yeah, I mean, uh, poker strategy is 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 so unique. Like, like honestly, the, the whole poker business. Uh, everybody gets so excited when they hear about poker stuff because yeah it, it's it's still special i feel like yeah. uh so yeah we're gonna see maybe we're gonna we're gonna be on tv at one day so the whole uh, uh, there like you said there are there 250 employees at one point so probably over 1000 people work for poker strategy in a lifetime oh, right yeah i think I, I for example i was doing the freelance freelancing with like i don't know like 100 people german doing german english wow. videos maybe 150 so yeah lots then they most of them were freelancers so yeah there were a lot of people so in we, the so universe we, 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 yeah we're just gonna book the the ritz Carlton in berlin book a black member party <laughs> like a black member party yeah yeah but the whole hotel the whole hotel <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that would be that would be so. Like, yeah, I think corn can do it. Yeah, I think he can. And uh, yeah, yeah, that would be crazy. That would be, wow. That's a good idea, actually. <laughs> uh, we'll we'll keep that in mind for <laughs> yeah. the future for the one year anniversary, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something, something, something like that. Actually, that's a fun idea. Right. Okay, guys, it was a fun time. Thank you very much. It was really fun. Uh, thank you very much, Clemens. Thank you, guys. Uh, and Vladimir. Uh, and uh, I'm I'm closely watching if you stay subscribed for the future no episode. Uh, you you see them, just some unsubscribe when you, you heard your, your episode. Uh, okay. Uh, that was it. It was really fun. And uh, Clemens, Herbert, and Vladimir are. Signing off now. Have a oh, great time, guys. guys. See you next bye time. Bye-bye.